周一長層同大家深入時事話題。今日請到兩位國會議員，一位係 Ontario 嚟嘅，一位係我哋嘅 West Vancouver 嘅啊，魏子安先生，亦同埋莊文浩啊，而兩個都有個中文名，而且兩個中文名都好似好有學問咁樣樣，好文藝氣息嘅。啊，第二，所以我。Continue our conversation. I would like to jump right into、uh, the uh, John Weston. What do you think? Because a lot of people,、uh, the, uh, although you have sent out a news re release supporting Michael and saying that this is loyal to the to the Prime Minister, loyal to the to the Conservative Party, but、uh, with the current existing political culture,、uh, one cannot help but worry about if. This、uh, act that does, does not get the、uh, support from the prime minister's office, will you be in trouble? And、uh, the, is that deep in your heart? Do you have you any concern about this? Can you、oh, share with us what you、uh, feel? This is, I think, very unfair to use the Guangdong language. We can't use our own language. Anyway,、uh, <laughs> I know that wasn't your question.、Uh, it's a very good question, and it's a serious one. Uh, uh, I would say I would be in trouble with my constituents if I didn't do what was right by them.、Mm. And what's right by them, and I can tell you from countless town halls like the one we're having today here in West Vancouver, is they want to know that their member of parliament is elected by them and accountable to them. And that is so simple as I say it, and yet the sacred and fundamental aspect of our democracy. So no matter what the topic, and whether it's fisheries or Aboriginal affairs or parliamentary reform. I'm answerable to my constituents first. That's my sacred duty.、Mm -hmm. But think about what this bill does. First of all, Michael's been very thoughtful about it. He said that the changes wouldn't occur during this term. The changes would come into effect after the next election. So this is not personal to any leader. Secondly, it's not just about our prime minister or Stephen Harper. It's about all leaders. So all parties would be accountable in the same way under this reform act. And thirdly, what makes me very proud as a conservative is that in our party platform, it says that we can vote against our government except on confidence motions, as it moves our conscience to do so. And so I feel it's、uh, it's one of the reasons I'm a conservative that I have the freedom. And it's no coincidence that conservatives have voted against their own party way more often than other parties in the House.、Mm -hmm. So. Do I have a sense of concern whether I would disagree with my prime minister? Yes, I do. He's a he's a brilliant man. He's a great leader. So to disagree with him would be something I would do only upon serious consideration. But I believe that this is such a good bill. It's good for all Canadians. It's good、mm -hmm. for all parties, and it's good ultimately for all leaders to be accountable. That I think this will. Ultimately, muster the support of people right across the House of Commons and the country. Thank you, Michael. Come back to the bill.、Uh, the, you, you have got a lot of support and praise in the,、uh, the in the direction of democracy. But、uh, some of the critics has questions about、uh, the, you giving too much power、uh, to the caucus、mm -hmm. because the leaders for you to remove or change or whatever、uh, it should come from the members、mm -hmm. and not from the caucus.、Mm -hmm. uh, so, how would you react to that? Well, what I would say is that the bill doesn't give any new powers to MPs or to party caucuses, to with respect to the review or removal of the party leader. Those powers already exist. For example,、uh, two months ago in Alberta, Premier Alison Redford was removed because her caucus was unhappy with her leadership.、Um, several months before that, Premier Kathy Dunderdale of Newfoundland and Labrador was removed because her caucus was unhappy with her leadership. In December 2008, Mr. Dion, Stefan Dion, was removed and replaced by Michael Ignatieff as leader of the Liberal Party、mm -hmm. because Caucus wasn't happy with his leadership. So that power already exists. My bill simply says that those rules for the transition in leadership need to be clear and they need to be written down on paper.、And、finally, I'd say this: the bill, the Reform Act, doesn't take away the power of the grassroots members of a political party to either elect. Mm -hmm. The full-time permanent leader of the party, nor does it take away their power to review that party leader after an election. In the case of the Conservative Party, that's after an election where we do not form a government. So it strengthens grassroots democracy by restoring local control over party candidates,、mm -hmm. and it simply recognizes the existing power of party caucuses with respect to the review of the leader and the election of an interim leader. Are they? I think one thing that I、uh, that that you have emphasized is. 
they can remove the, the, the current part, but it was uh, and place an interim. Yes. So uh, uh, the, the interim will have an expiration day, and it has to be, at the end of the day, it has to be chosen by the grassroots, yeah. by the uh, so, members. So right? in the event of a, of a leadership review, so in, in the event that the, if the Reform Act were to become law, and what would happen in the event of a leadership crisis is that the caucus would quickly come together and vote either to sustain the leader, in mm. which case the dissenters would be told to, to, uh, to get behind the leader and support the leader, or uh, it, the caucus would come together and vote to remove the leader and immediately elect an interim leader. Once that interim leader is elected, the party outside parliament, the registered political party, would then begin a proper leadership race and elect mm. the leader as they currently do. Yeah, I think that's, that's clarification is very important. And then, John, uh, there is also another, I think it's from National Post. Uh, they said is that this makes, doesn't make any difference at all because no matter what kind of structure you put into it, uh, the, uh, the Prime Minister's office, the leader's office, has all the resources and power to do whatever they want to do regardless of what all these structures. Uh, do you think that's fair comment? Let me just hold a, a, a little icon here. This is a bicycle, obviously, and this represents national health and fitness. And this very day in Niagara Falls, the Federation of Canadian Municipalities had its annual general meeting and they passed a resolution supporting a private member's bill of mine and Nancy Green Reigns that promotes mm -hmm. National Health and Fitness Day. Back in 2011, I passed a bill on crystal meth and ecstasy. It was a private member's bill that I introduced that made the law different, made it harder to create and distribute crystal meth and ecstasy to our youth. I've also created National Prescription Drug Drop-Off Day. So there are countless things that an individual member of parliament who is supported by his people and, and has the expertise of great advisors and puts together a team and works with other MPs. You know, I would say that to his credit, Michael has made changes to his bill as he listened to what other MPs had to say. And that's part of the genius of the bill. So yes, the Prime Minister's office is powerful, and so it should be. The Prime Minister needs to lead a country of 34 million people in a very complicated world. But yes, members of Parliament who are willing to stand up for what their constituents believe can also change our country for the better. And that's what we're doing today. Thank you. And I hope uh, that he changing the leaders or the way of running the, the party will also get the support. <laughs> okay, now uh, others suggested that uh, the bill is almost like uh, an insider thing for MPs for, uh, in Ottawa. It doesn't matter to, uh, to most of the mom and pops of the uh, regular. So, but my last question to, uh, to both of you is that can you help our audience to understand why this, uh, this matters to them? Yeah, I think that's the most important question. Mm -hmm. I think that the most prosperous societies around the world, the most stable societies around the world, are all democracies. And mm -hmm. that's no accident. If you look at the most wealthy, the most prosperous, the most stable societies, in the long run, they are all democracies. Sure, in the short run, there are certain uh, dictatorships, cer certain totalitarian systems of government that do produce prosperity, that do produce stability. But in the long run, they will fail and falter. And there's a reason for that. Democracies have a central principle, and that is that power cannot be concentrated in any one person or any one place. Democracies like ours are all about checks and balances on power mm -hmm. to make sure that no one person, no one office has all the power. And so if we are to maintain and sustain our prosperity in Canada in the 21st century, we have to strengthen our democratic institutions, we have to strengthen the checks and balances on power. Um, the checks and balances between the executive and the legislative branches of government. And that's why this bill is so important. If we're going to continue to compete against the rise of the rest of the world, we have to have a foundation of strong governance, of strong government that has these checks and balances of power. And that's why this bill is so very important. So if you care about the prosperity of your children and grandchildren, um, you will support initiatives that put 
uh, checks and balances on power, and that's exactly what the Reform Act will do. Thank you. So uh, the, Michael has said about the direction that we are heading towards, uh, but for voters, for the, for, the rec for the people who is going to vote in the next election. Uh, what is your message to them and how would this bill, although it won't be in the next election but in the future, uh, how would it affect your voters or the, uh, the, the citizens in your constituents? In how would it change their behavior? In a very fundamental way, BC, I, I think this discussion that, that you have uh, promoted today the discussion that will happen later today here in West Vancouver in an open town hall. It's an open invitation advertised in the newspapers. The discussions that are happening across the country, and Michael's been in several other places across Canada talking about this, the discussion you mentioned in the newspapers, agree or disagree, doesn't matter whether you agree or disagree as much as we have the right to discuss these things, that we are involved, that we're engaged, that the voters turn up at the voter booths and they cast their ballots and they take ownership in their government, and they tell us what they want to aspire to, that our young people get engaged. We have an incredible volunteer force in my offices here in West Vancouver, on the Sunshine Coast, in Ottawa, at Powell River. Those people are engaged. And so, among other things, I think what Michael's done in his leadership is he's getting people engaged. He's getting them to love their country and love their democracy and care about it. Thank you. Today we are really happy to have this chance to share with us your thoughts about the future of democracy in Canada. We are very happy to have two representatives of the government, one north and one south, to talk with us about the Canadian government and the Canadian government and the Canadian government. 而甚至係唔識得去珍惜或者去檢討我哋點樣更進步，總覺得我哋係全世界最進步嘅民主國家。但係今次咧呢、这個嘅法案提醒我哋，我哋仲有好大嘅空間可以進步、可以改進嘅。誒、呃，今日呢個節目咧，我哋第一次係誒嚟離開我哋攝影棚嚟到 Hollyburn Country Club 誒嚟嚟同大家討論呢、这個我我覺得。係非常重要嘅問題，希望大家能夠多繼續注意呢個法案嘅發展。啊，第二咁樣樣，我哋大家一齊為加拿大下一代嘅民主政治嘅前途一齊努力。